Hi everyone, welcome to my second installment, or really the first installment, of my video blog, my vlog, Andrea Montrose, here for you. And you know what? This is the second take. I just did an 11 minute one and did not think to do a test run to make sure everything's good. And I went to listen to it, to watch it, watch the playback, and there's no volume, no sound whatsoever. So I had to fandangle it and now it is working and all that stuff I had already said now I got to repeat it and try to remember what I said. So anyway, probably didn't need to hear that, but I told you anyway. Hi, welcome, 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 welcome one and all. All right, I got some topics I need to talk about and the first one is karma and karma and how karma works in life because a lot of people... I feel don't understand how karma works okay karma is this little thing called uh, called what you do in life and it's everything it's how you treat people it's the little things you say under your breath it's everything it's energy and when you throw out energy you get energy back it's like looking in a mirror or throwing a boomerang it comes back on you you know it might not be as swift as you might think and hope it would be <laughs> to some people but it does come back and get you which is why they say karma is a bitch or karma is a motherfucker because it is but it's not necessarily about the bad it's good karma as well you know you do good things you treat people how you would want them to be treated and that comes back on you so you know whatever you throw out you choose to throw out in the day you know expect to get it back and you know I, I always people that people that know me um, and especially the old me back when I was a kid in my 20s yeah I had uh, an issue with running my mouth and being negative and things and you know now I just you know who cares there's so much stuff to worry about you know you can't be bothered with what he said or she said and he did and who he's doing and, and all that you know it's just like let it go you know throw it out get rid of it karma karma good stuff there's your lesson. If you're good to people, people will be good to you. And if you're bad to people, people will be bad to you. Simple as that. So you can't wish somebody a horrible death and, um, and then sit there and wonder why nobody wants to talk to you. <laughs> or you got somebody else attacking you. You know? Think about that, all right? Karma, it's a motherfucker. It's good stuff, though. Good stuff. All right, okay. And with karma, you know, it, it, it all ties together. It's the circle of life, you know? Well, yeah, it's a circle. I think that's why the planets are round. It's just an endless seamless thing circles and spheres are you know it, everything all ties in together um yeah so my next topic that i want to discuss and address is this little thing um it's not necessarily this is addressing my people black folks but it also will translate to gays and to and really to everybody human beings how we treat one another here's what pisses me off this past weekend for those of you who don't know i work at uh or the club i work at um it's predominantly caucasian and um there were a group of black folks sitting on the front row watching the show and with my four numbers I didn't see not one dime out of anybody now I feel that 
as someone in a minority, and I'm in a double minority, I might add, we should take care of one another. You know, it, it goes back to when when we banded together and, and even today with, with gays trying to get married and, and fighting for our rights today. You know, it, it's about banding together and taking care of one another. You know, I would never go into an establishment like that or be in that type of situation, whether it be in a club or or at a restaurant or somewhere and not take care of my people, you know? I would never go uh, to a, a restaurant and see another gay person or, or that, that a gay person waiting on me. Well, he's clearly a gay person waiting on me and, you know, like stiff them or, you know, you know, treat them like shit. You know, it fucking sucks. And we all got to stick together. And it's not, you know, just for blacks and, and gays and Asians and Hispanics. I mean, it's for everybody. We all got to stick together and help one another out. You don't get some fat bitch on stage working her ass off and just sit there and look at her like she's got a lump on her head. I digress. Others feel this way. Just want to get that off my chest. Put that out in the universe. And see see if you notice it. See if you notice it the next time when you go out. You'll see. It happens more more times than we like to admit. Anyway. Okay, let's see. What else can we talk about? I want to talk about something up and coming that I'm going to start with. A good friend of mine, Mr. Brandon Bird, he, if you don't know, he is a, <laughs> well, about to be a radio personality. He is a good friend of mine, and we, um, he works at the Carousel here in Knoxville. He's the upstairs DJ and show director-ish. He kind of takes care of the girls, makes sure they're together and put together. But we like music. I'm a music person, for those of you who know me, or don't know me, I'm a music person, I listen to music, I would rather, actually I do listen to music more than I watch TV or anything else. So we have, we just want to have some fun with it, talk about album reviews and song reviews, um, like new stuff that's coming out, we know we may talk about uh, some celebrity gossip that we, that we heard and you know, that kind of thing. And, just, you know, just have some fun. And we're going to call our little segment the Jules Robert Report. Which is a crazy name. But uh, we will get to... <laughs> I will... Uh, maybe we'll explain to who Jules Robert is. It's quite funny. I'm laughing on the inside right now. <laughs> At Brandon and Jules Robert. You just have to wait. It's going to be big fun. Big, big fun. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I have my little handy-dandy list of paper that has some things jotted down. Um, yeah, this next topic, too. Um, as a drag queen or, or even a public person, someone that does something that other people aspire to do and maybe want to get on my level or whoever's level, you know, whether it's me or Madonna, you know, whatever. Um, we have to give back. And of course that goes back to karma, but it's, it's, it's more selfless. You know, I started, I just had this conversation with a, a guy that I met, I think his name is Steven. I'm horrible with names. Anyway, he asked me um, how I got to judge the talent shows on Wednesdays. And I told him, I was like, well, I just kind of, you know, I'm just kind of here. I'm, it's my day off. And, um, and, I, and I've always had a thing for talent shows. Uh, where I come from in big old, the, the big city of Johnson, Johnson City, Tennessee, 
my home state, home home city. Um, I used to host the talent shows, and then um, and then I started judging them as well. I just I just always felt close to close to the up and coming girls, and and I felt like I needed I need to you know want to help them out because it, it's such being in the entertainment business is is so hard to to get into and you know and a lot of people don't get feedback and don't get the 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 constructive feedback that they should so you know I I'm always going to be interested in the up and coming entertainers and you know and if and if I you know I always I always have an opinion about something so if I can you know, help with my expertise, then then so be it. Um, yeah, and and the point of that, you know, is is to give back. You know, a, a lot of these girls and guys, they're looking for parents or whatever. You know, drag mothers, and Lord knows I have enough children of my own. I've lost count. I think I'm like at 26 or something right now. That all don't do drag, but um, <laughs> um, but you know, you know, I, you don't have to be their their drag parent, but you can you can say, hey, fix your hair, or you know, try doing this with your eyebrows, or try blending this more, or you know, something like that. You know, it's not taking taking on the responsibility of being a parent, you know, just, just help them out. Cause you know, you have, you have to, you have to remember where you came from. Yes. That's an important lesson. I think that people nowadays forget that that applies, that is so universal is that they forget where they come from. You know, they, they get to a certain spot and then they start acting grand and shit. And, you know, it's like, bitch, I remember when uh, you was out there in your bed sheets with that much makeup on doing this and doing that, you know, shut the fuck up, you know, help that bitch out. So help one another, give back karma, the circle of life. And the room is up. I'm giddy. It's, it's, uh, what time is it? It is 15 till 4 in the morning. It's midday for me, of course. I'm a night owl. I'm going to have to get in my coffin before sun up, though, or my skin will burn and I will disintegrate. Yeah. <laughs> Craziness. Okay, what else can we talk about? Uh, on my little sheet here. Um, I don't know. Just, uh, just think positive. I know it, it's such a, um, and as, as a young person who, if you're a young person watching this, you know, try to take yourself out a little bit and really listen to someone uh, that's older and is trying to give you advice. You know, I wish that I was, had done that when I was uh, in my early 20s and my late teens and early 20s and really um, taking in the, the good advice that I just, you know, threw my hand up and like, okay, and act like they didn't know what they're talking about because I knew everything and I still don't nobody does but you know I can I can certainly reflect on my experiences and if I see you making a mistake that I made I'm certainly going to let you know and try to give you advice so that you can either deal with it or avoid it avoid the heartache you know um, yeah, so, you know, just just listen out there. 
when someone is speaking, you know, it could be God speaking. You never know. You never know. Anyway, okay, well, I think it's going to do for tonight's installment. I hope you had a blast. I know I had a blast. Uh, I had a good time tonight. If I hadn't mentioned earlier, I went to, I went out to the Carousel 2 here in Knoxville and party with with my girls. I need to give a shout out to Champel Denise, uh, Alex and, Alex, ugh, Anastasia Alexander, <laughs> uh, Mitchell and Brandon and everybody else I can't think of, of Vivica Kaysen, Ray, and Mr. Uh, Chad Kaysen Ray. Have to give a shout out to them. Uh, we had a good time. I always have a good time when I go to the carousel. It's my it's my second home. Yes, it's my second home here in Knoxville. Love you guys. And uh, I have to do a quote, a little piece of advice, a little one word, one little phrase thing to leave you, leave you, give you some food for thought. And it actually comes from the one and only legendary diva bitch herself, Miss Champelle Denise. And she says earlier today, she said, there are no carrots in an apple pie. Yeah. One more time. There are no carrots in an apple pie. Now think about that. Let that marinate. I want you to uh, leave a comment. I want, to, I, want, I want to know what you think about that statement, about that piece of advice. Tell me what it means to you. You can email me at thehousemontrose at gmail.com or you can leave a message on Facebook or you can leave a post here on YouTube, on my YouTube page at uh, Gypsy Moth 77 wherever, wherever you can get a hold of me. I want to know. I want some feedback. And of course, you know, topics, anything you want to talk, want me to talk about or say or give a shout out to. Uh, one thing I'm not going to do is stir shit because I ain't got time for that. I got more important things and better things to do. I'm not going to get on here and talk about this queen and that queen or this motherfucker or that motherfucker or you, the motherfucker. I'm not going to talk about it. So, um, yeah. Other than that, we can kind of keep it, well, I won't say PG, because I, you know, cuss like a goddamn sailor, but, you know. And I'm trying not to say GD. I shouldn't say that. You don't should say that. It's just, doesn't sound good. Scratch that. GD. Cuss like a fucking sailor. You know, you could say that. Anyway, <laughs> okay, kids, I'm going to bed because it's like four o'clock, as you can tell. Uh, I hope I'm going to do these in one take, so there isn't a lot of editing done because, uh, you know, that's how mama likes it rough. Oh, we we'll leave that door wide open. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> to quote another diva, uh, Whitney Houston, and I, I need to, uh, you need to watch a series, a little web series here on YouTube called uh, "Got to Be Real," the Divas Variety Show, uh, "The Bell of the Balls." does it uh, I think I've saved a couple of in my favorites on my YouTube page y'all need to check it out because it is hilarious and Whitney Houston on there she quotes and this is how it's my new thing and this is how I'm going to end everything so she says uh, thank you for listening thank you for watching and thank me for speaking all right kids Y'all have a good night, and we will see you next time. Peace, love, and hair grease.